if you have a dream, if there's something you want to do, don't be afraid to do it. Because life is really short. And when we get through it, there's nothing wrong with saying I failed at something. But if you didn't try it, you never know. Welcome to the bay here. Uh, this is McNabb's Bay or the Malagash Basin. It's Canada's first oyster farm. What happened was that McFarland wanted to farm oysters. He went to the Nova Scotia government. Alexander McFarland had the vision, got the lease, invited his family, the McNabs, in to operate it for him. He said, I'd like to involve my best friend, and his best friend was Stephen Purdy, my great-great-grandfather. And I guess that's about how it took place. Uh, I started out with a, a license to uh, recreationally fish oysters, because that was relaxing and I loved oysters. So uh, then uh, I had the opportunity to move that to a commercial license. So I get commercial oyster license and um, started doing that uh, just as a hobby because it relaxed me. And uh, so, you know, I, I knew the industry uh, is what basically happened. Uh, Nancy, would you get me another life jacket in there? Uh, no. Alrighty. What am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anything? Oh yeah, I got myself another pair of gloves. They were right there. Thank you. <laughs> the hand from behind the door. <laughs> Basically, the process is: we, uh, I go out, or one of one of the boys or workers go out, and we fuel up the harvester, we fire it up, we head up to one of the leases. If you're uh, afraid of mud and afraid of being wet and afraid of being cold, this is not a job for you. There's a, a hose that brings water from a water pump down to a manifold that's on the sled. So your water comes out on an angle, hits the bottom, causes a, a turbulence which moves the oysters and shellfish back to a collection head and onto a flat wire belt chain and that just brings it up to the surface where you can pick them off as frantically as possible. It's so gentle that it doesn't kill anything that's down there. It's all good fun. That's all that matters. We're only here for a short while. We best enjoy it. I'm lucky enough to do what I love. Keeps me out here on the bay. Follow your heart, man. Follow your heart. That's the way the stuff comes in off the harvester. So, lots of cleaning. With the clams, it's not a problem. They're all nice and perfect. And no, no work to do to them. As, as we work areas, we get more of the individual oysters. But there's always a few that are, that are clumped together that we have to take apart. I'm basically uh, sizing the cohogs, uh, sorting them out of the, uh, they come in with the oysters and the cohogs are together and then we also have to clean the oysters and then we grade them and size them into yeah. many different sizes, small, medium and large standard and then four different sizes of choice. That's basically what we do. I guess our policy through our whole married lives that we helped out as best as we could when the time was necessary to do it. I do just about everything except for the uh, actual harvesting um, on, the, on the barge, but we do a lot of the, the cleaning, sorting, selling, um, basically anything that goes on in the plant, Rachel and I do. And this is Rachel who's going to be taking the business over. Oh. Daughter number two. 
She's a maniac to work. I wish she'd slow down a little bit. But anyway, that's the way it is, I guess. Dinner time. If I had my way, I would never charge for an oyster because in the, in the native culture, oysters are all about a good experience. If you take an oyster out, you open an oyster up, you share it with somebody. If you're lucky, maybe you have a sip of beer or a little sip of wine or something along with it. And it's an experience and it's a sharing of something in common.